Hi, my name is Andrew Kravtsev and today I decided to talk about another beautiful first digital instrument, well, one of the first digital instruments on the market called DK Synergy. And DK comes from a digital keyboard incorporation, which produced the Synergy 1, 2 and 2 plus, or, or three total versions of this instrument produced over a lifetime. It was pretty short lifetime of that instrument, but it has created significant impact to the overall music industry in a way how we using this technology these days. So uh, this is actually the, let's say, commercial version of the another influential system called GDS uh, by Bell Labs. And that's basically they adopted the GDS technology and put it together and included it onto the uh, uh, onto the form factor of a playable instrument rather than being a development machine. So that ended up in the uh, Synergy 1, which was released by early 80s, and uh, two updates to this, 2 and 2+, plus, which included some of the extra functionality to the system. In the meantime, they were all upgradable instruments at that time, and there were kits available to uh, switch from the 1 to 2 to 2+. Plus. Uh, today they are obsolete, so you cannot find them. So uh, what it is actually? Well, as I mentioned, it's a digital machine in the way that you produce the sound digitally. So unlike like other instruments that use the microprocessor earlier than this system, well, let's say um, Prophet 5 is a great example here, that used microprocessor to control the analog uh, sound um, uh, synthesis, uh, in case of the Synergy, that was all done in the digital domain. And it's one of the greatest machines that has a capability of a FEM synthesis. Uh, and it's quite different from a FEM synthesis that came later in DX7 package. And uh, it sounds on its own uh, very different. In the meantime, we know what has happened. So DX7 took the market and basically Synergy uh, went nowhere with that technology. Um, in addition to the three versions that I mentioned, two, well, one, two, and two plus, uh, this instrument produced also in a different casing. This one is black. There is one also in a polished wood, uh, which just sets it to more, I would say, expansive look. Uh, internally, they don't have any difference. I own a couple of the systems uh, that I restored and upgraded, and the greatest advantage of the recent years is development that has happened about these machines that they give that gave them a second breath. So um, this development first has happened um, roughly about two years ago. The, the person Bob Grieb from Towntech, you may know this name because he also produced the alternative firmware for other uh, music instruments like uh, Oberheim Matrix 6. So Matrix 6 users must have that. It's much faster and more responsive than the original one. He also uh, came up with an idea of a reproduction of the uh, original upgrade kits for the Synergy. And uh, this kit is basically a Dota board that comes on top of the original main board and it provides the extra functionality. The difference between one and two is ability to set up the external editor and use it with a Kypro system and, um, and control it over the serial port that was introduced. It also, it also had an ability to cascade two synergies together uh, if you happen to own two. Uh, with 2 Plus, they added the uh, MIDI capability to basically MIDI input and output. Very basic, but is just barely enough to play it, and that's it. No other control functions expected, um, in addition to the serial. So uh, that was the kit that uh, Bob decided to remanufacture. However, uh, many components on it were obsolete, and you can no longer get those. So he redesigned it with modern components and put some modern features inside it. One of those features was actually the ability to store more sounds. Originally, if you had Synergy 1, 2, or 2 plus, internally you limited only to 24 sounds stored in the system that you can access from the front panel and quickly switch between them. So first sound. Uh, 
And if you needed more sounds, you have to put that through the cartridge slot and put a real cartridge inside it that has an improv on it. And there are multiple cartridges produced uh, by DKM at that time. One of the most greatest sounding and uh, famous are sounds produced by the Wendy Carlos. And she made an amazing job for uh, well designing those sounds using her systems and she was one of the most powerful users of those systems at the time she had it. So uh, certainly uh, these cartridges also comes uh, pre-populated on a card internally on the daughter card that Bob produced and you can quickly access those without any modification to the system. So there is a key combination that basically triggers that routine for changing the, uh, the banks. In order to do that, you press Restore, you press Program 4, and now you press a cartridge number. So if I press the cartridge 2, uh, and then I change the sounds, that would be sounds of cartridge 2. For instance, I'm on sound 13, if I change it uh, to cartridge 1 again, it's a different sound on the same 13. So by doing that, you get full access to additional well, 23 cartridges. So you have lots of the sounds internally if you don't have any other connectivity options. And so now let's talk about connectivity. That came with the Synergy 2 and basically matured to the Synergy 2+. Uh, the original interface to connect two systems together, the Kuiper computer and the Synergy is basically the serial interface and you only pass the messaging between these interfaces. As you may see, uh, Synergy doesn't have any uh, display in it. So basically you use your Kuiper system as a display. And you have to have it if you're inter interested in a sound design because otherwise you'll be only limited to the internal sounds, which could be great that then you have a Bob's expansion, totally fine, but you will be missing lots of the fun playing the internal synthesis engine and you will be pretty much using Synergy as a preset machine, which is awful. So uh, let me show you how the, uh, uh, the Kuiper is working. As you may see, I have a Kuiper here and another monitor that I'll be switching later. And basically I have a capability to control Synergy from the two places. Now let's talk about Kuiper. That would be our standard way. And I'm just using a simple uh, mechanical switch to switch between the two serial ports coming from this system and from our system. So turn it on. Kuiper experience is amazing. Uh, Kuiper is a CPM uh, compatible machine produced from early 80s through the all 80s. Many people at that time had these systems at home. They were quite inexpensive, I would say reasonably inexpensive by that time. And they originally shipped the, the five and a quarter inch floppies, which I no longer have. I have two floppy emulator here. And the reason why I have two, because you have to have a boot disk with, with the main uh, software in it. And uh, I also want to quickly change the sounds. So in order to change the sounds, I'm using the second drive emulation and I'm switching uh, the sounds on this drive while these pretty much on the same image all the time. So now system, it boots quickly, just momentarily. Uh, and it's, you're in a common prompt. In order to start talking these systems together, you have to set the speed appropriately. You do that through a command called BOD M. BOD sets a BOD rate, M sets it for modem port, which is basically a serial port. You press enter and you get to the selection from A to H and H is the maximum speed 9.2 kilobots and that's a maximum uh, speed rate of the serial port and it's a maximum talking speed of the synergy. So internally by switching the jumper you can select the different baud rate for speak between these two machines and depends um, uh, I would say on the quality of the communication, you may decide I don't actually need full 19.2, I can switch to 9600 baud rate, and that would be totally fine. You will not actually notice the significant changes in the speed. As I'm having really all the updated boards with 
of everything upgraded internally, why not run the fastest speed rate? So you press H and now you set to the baud rate. After that, you're basically running the Synergy host control software by typing CMHCS and pressing enter again. And now you're actually loading the, the controlling software. You are now in the main window of that software, as you may find, it's produced in year 85. And that's that user experience that gives you the Kaipro with green screen, just amazing looking, and the overall system. Now, uh, what we will do, we will switch our file store to the drive B. So we press 3 for select current drive uh, and select the drive. So that would be B. And now you serve a request to this drive. And now I am on the image on this drive. There are many Im images here with tons of voice files. And from here I can edit and enter to actually voice mode. You set 15, enter voice in mode. And this is where you set the communication between these two. Now we're actually in a constant talking mode. Before that, the software was just running. It could even run the, the Synergy disconnected. Now they are connected together. And uh, you may see that Synergy in a voicing mode by blinking cartridge indicator. From here, let me show you a couple examples here, how you just control it. Because the system is really complex. There are lots of things that you can do with it. Uh, what you need to know, uh, just some basics to show. Uh, I press 1 to load voice file, and now it gets to the, all the voicing files on this drive. And, well, let me load some voice, for instance, poly3. I said just it. Uh, poly3, press enter. Uh, voice is loaded. And that's the poly3 voice. If I want to load another voice, I can again switch to the menu, uh, press 1, and load a different voice, for instance, log. Don't know what it means. Uh, load it. It uses only uh, uh, two uh, voices on it, so that's pretty simple voice. From there, uh, you can actually now enter into the programming, and you can do actual programming of a voice oscillators. And you do that from the front panel of a Synergy. That's, that's a great advantage. So you use this system basically as a display to the missing display on that system. And by, for instance, switching between programs, you change windows where you edit this. What's actually cool, then if you play something or if you change something, you can immediately see the response. For instance, that's just a Keys, I'm pressing it, tracking that because it constantly communicates between these two. Uh, that is, let's get out of there. Uh, that is on this page. Now from the voices, you can control up to 16 partials that Synergy is capable to generate by selecting just a partial number. And we have two in this case. That's, that's why then I, I'm switching the partial the letter highlighted here. And the remaining buttons are just assigned functions, what you actually do and how you can how you control and program. For instance, depends what you do. You do programming of amplitude or you do the programming of a scale, then you will be using the tuning knob, which is no longer a tuning knob. Uh, to to control the specific function. So that's all super interesting uh, and it's totally a different user experience from what we um, well used to see in the current software and that's what makes the Synergy unique. It comes with a full manual just for the software program which is actually great to learn and if you really want to get into the into the into the capabilities of a synth engine of, engine of this machine. Amazing. Now, from there, I'm not going to get into these details because that, that would take much longer time. I just want to briefly scratch it and move to another way how you can um, control a synergy if you don't have a Kaipro. I still think that the Kaipro is a cool thing to have.
Uh, it may be not effective to run it all the time. I mean, all of this vintage gear and, uh, well, it can fail for sure uh, any moment. Uh, what I did for myself, I implemented another way, another two ways to control synergy. And let's talk about this. So, uh, I'm switching now my system, my uh, serial switch to the Raspberry Pi, which is right here. And um, then I'm switching between the editors. It's actually better to turn the synergy off simply because if one editor has already started communicating the, the synergy, another one can simply confuse it and get into the totally wrong mode. You don't want that. So turn it on. Turn uh, Pi on. And let's boot Raspberry Pi and let's see how we can how we can control it from a Raspberry Pi. This is uh, how I'm using that in, I would say, in the normal days, um, because that would be much just faster, but it's also modern, so that could be something that you don't want to experience when you work with that vintage hardware. Let's switch here. Uh, we open the terminal. The way you run it, basically you run first, the first the first option on the Pi Pro, you run original uh, application in the Chi Pro emulation, which is a DOS program. And in order to run DOS program, you run it in the software called QDOS, uh, DOSBox. I'm sorry. And uh, with the DOSBox, you just emulate the DOS first. Under the DOS emulation, you run uh, Chi Pro emulation, and only then you run the original program. You can do that by typing sudo uh, dosbox. And why you need a user privileges, basically the way how dosbox works with the serial ports, uh, you have to have it otherwise that wouldn't be working. So, uh, great. Um, now my dosbox is scripted just in a way, as soon as it starts, it sets some uh, parameters already. It sets the serial port communication, what serial port it wants to go, and it gives you to the um, commander. So from there, you can run the emulator called ZATMU. Uh, you press enter, and now you are in exactly the same software that we ran there initially to set the baud rate. So you press H, and from there, we are running the same uh, program as on the Kai Pro. We can enter the voicing mode similarly. Press 15. And voila, we are in the voicing mode and communication between these two established. The advantage of using the emulator in this case is you no longer dealing with the, the uh, floppy images and um, and you dealing just with the files which sit in the same directory as your main program. So you don't need to change the files. You just, you don't need to change the images. You just move the files. You can see that uh, I'm not changing the floppy location. All I need to do, if I want to see what my files, I just press eight to list all the voice files. And these are basically files which are in the same directory as my application. If I want to load this file, Press one, load voice file, and I can load one of the files that's here. Let's say it's analog one, press enter. Uh, then basically the file loaded and it transmits information to Synergy. And it, it's loaded uh, that particular voice. So everything else works exactly in the same way as with the original Kypra even green color. So uh, as soon as you press button, it updates the screen there. And um, that's, that's just the way it works. So very similar user experience. Still, I like Kai Pro much better because of a mechanical keyboard and the look. Uh, but uh, I want to be careful and to my hardware and just use it when I really need it. Okay, now let's talk about the second option. 
Let me close the DOS, DOS box simulator. So you see the Raspberry Pi is totally fine for these purposes. I don't need more powerful computer. Even I can run exactly the same on my uh, normal computer. It doesn't matter is it Windows or Mac OS based. Uh, that would be exactly the same. So now I will shut down the Synergy, restart it basically again, because I'll be changing the editors. Uh, let's wait a few moments, turn it back. And let's talk about another amazing program that came uh, about a year ago from another great person, uh, Steve Tyner. And the name of the software is Synergize. So Synergize is basically the cross-platform application that can run in uh, um, Windows, Mac OS, and there is also a build for uh, Linux with Raspberry Pi support for ARM processor. So I started um, just by clicking on this program called Execute in the Terminal because it will give me also in the background uh, all of the login information, what happens to the system and how it responds. Synergize was in a beta for quite a long time, but I consider it stable now and it's just, it's a totally new way to control Synergy. Uh, how it works. I click connect button, connect to Synergy. Uh, it asks me the serial port. That's one, only one serial port I have connected to the Raspberry Pi. I click OK. And now it's connected. Um, uh, in the background, all of these is just the console information, uh, just in case of any errors. Now I can switch to my libraries that, let's say in that case, voice files. I click voice in mode. It sets the voice in mode and it says it's enabled. And now I can click the voice file, let's say Carlos, Wendy Carlos uh, library and load this file. It takes a while. And that's now playing one of the Wendy Carlos uh, original uh, emulations that used to be on the cartridges. From there, amazing advantages to, to do that from a graphical screen. Check this out, how, how easy it is and how, how you can control with a mouse. And you can move the mouse and basically uh, control the envelopes for every partial. In that case, there are only two used. It's just a great way and it's totally new breath to the synergy because you can do everything much easier. In the meantime, that puts you to the same domain as with other software where you now lack of the original user experience and you're just using the synth engine, the, the modern GUI. So you can be concerned about that and you can be right when you, when you select one or two. I prefer to have everything available, so it depends on the mood. Um, I, can, I can switch where I want to. This is certainly much faster than doing that with the Kuiper, just simply because you can drag with a mouse and it updates and it updates uh, all of the uh, synth engine inside the Synergy. However, you're no longer able to use all of these like original layout. If you got used to what you can do with Kuiper, now that would be totally missing for you. Uh, anyway, I think this is it, but what I want to cover today and to give you just the overview of these capabilities of this wonderful machine. As you see, I'm not playing it and I didn't suppose to play it. I'm more willing to talk about the technology and uh, how you can control this technology. Um, and uh, I think that uh, such information is really missing now and I would like to promote the Synergize a lot. It's a way to go. All right, with that, all the best in the new year and see you soon. Goodbye.